Chase, joined today with Jake the Pop. Uh, we have Tom Smith and Phil Healy also here in the house. How is everybody doing? Another Jake from year State in Farm. paradise. Oh, it is. It is the Jake from State Farm dog. <laughs> I, I wanted to say, too, we are very close to 100 programs. We're definitely going to hit it this year. Yeah, we're at 94. This is the we're virtual taping of 94. Right now, so. We would be at 96, but we don't want to blame other people. For so I will just say listen. 94 is in the, is, uh, we have. for legal reasons. We can't say who was at fault. That's exactly true. Yeah. So it was Jake's fault. Um, Jake, but, hey, you know uh, what? Wasn't going to bring it up, but you know, we hope everybody's holiday was great. Um, mine was better than expected. So that was good. Um, I do want to get into talking about the Celtics as Phil has his bandana on right there. Um, we're going to talk about them. We're going to talk about the Bruins because I have some choice words to say about that organization. Um, and really nothing on the Patriots front. I just want, more want to talk about what our expectations are here for the playoffs for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So let's lead it off with the Celtics here first. Um, I just want to just say how much of a kind of a breath of fresh air it is to watch um, this team, even without Kemba Walker. Um, being there because um, he's out on injury. Sorry, Jake. Bye, Jake. Because um, he's had enough of me already today. Um, but Kemba's not there. Um, there's been a couple other little bit of injuries with Marcus Smart and some things there. Um, obviously, there's no Gordon Hayward, but I like what I see. My biggest gripe that I still have, though, with the NBA is this political stance they make. Um, we as a country need to stop being so divided doesn't matter who has, who supports whatever president or person it is. There is way too much, this is how we're going to do it, or there's way too many, there's way too much force of making a political stance on certain things. So that's why for me, the NBA has kind of, I guess, not been appointment television for me. But I like the product that the Celtics have out there right now. So that's the positive. Let's talk about what our thoughts are on how the Celtics have been uh, so far this season. I believe they are now six and three after the uh, thrilling victory against the Miami Heat uh, last uh, last night. Yeah, that was, a, that was a great game. And uh, yeah, you know my thoughts on uh, how the NBA have conducted themselves over the year. And I know we talked about it actually during the summer, we talked about it and a nice uh, face of facts with you and I, but that's yeah, very, well. very nice. Whether we, I mean, we, we clearly, we don't necessarily fully agree on it, but it was nice to have a conversation with you about it in a civil manner, which well, uh, seems you know, to be lacking. My, my stance with some people. may have changed a little bit. Um, I'm just tired of everybody pointing fingers. I'm tired of the hate. I'm tired of the, people that are way too wrapped up in things that they cannot control. Live your life, take care of yourself. Those are things that I think I sometimes have forgotten that, but not to be selfish because that's not what people should be. But if people concern themselves with, you know, their close knit family or themselves more, I think this country would be operating a whole lot different than it, than it would be right now. But that's my stance on that. I, I care more about talking about um, the Celtics and everything right now. Yeah, yeah, no, no. I, I just wanted to uh, throw that out there because it's always interesting. It's always kind of, I, I love the NBA. I just do. I mean, there's some things about it, like the officiating is one of the best things to uh, rag on because it's sometimes it's just so weird and bad. But part of that is, I mean, you, I guess you could say that about any league, but the NBA is uh, specifically. And I guess last night I would have said, like, I guess any shot uh, that uh, Butler had taken, Jimmy Butler had taken, just put him at the line. I don't care. Just yep. just put him at the line. Because it was almost like, uh, I don't know if you saw it, Tom. I know, Nick, you, you saw it, but I don't know what your thoughts were. But I was like, oh, they should just, like, put a chair there for him. <laughs> just any time he has the ball. Oh, that would have been great. Yeah, put him at the line. Um, no, but, you know, Jimmy Butler is a great player, and he, he played well. But it was a thrilling game. And I actually, I'm enjoying the Celtics. And I think one of the things about this team, the shortened season, which isn't really that much, it's like 10 games, but it's coming off of like the crazy kind of schedule of the summer leading to the fall. Uh, but we're going to watch this team and they're going to figure out who they are. And I think like people, 
like I, I mean I like what I'm seeing now I love what I'm seeing from Brown and Tatum because it seems like they're like all right this is our team it seems like they're taking that and they're running with it and doesn't I don't know. it seem like they play better without Kemba and Gordon Hayward uh yeah I, I think that their identity I think it's a play, they're going to be playing better, but they're also going to be like it's an identity thing, I think. And I think that fits into what you're saying about them playing better. It's strange, they just... it's strange to watch because those are two big names, of course. But the unit that I have to tell you, one of the one of the moves that I really think was underrated for this team, and I, to my uh, best of knowledge, I underrated this one. I didn't. We didn't talk about it enough. You did, Phil. Uh, that's Jeff Teak. Oh, yeah. I thoroughly enjoy watching him play, and he fits tremendously into the Celtics system. So I like what I see there. He seems like he's got a good head on his shoulders. He's a leader. The players like Tatum and Brown, they bought, bought in. They trust yeah. him. And truthfully, I mean, he's filling in for Kemba, but I don't think that they've missed a beat on that front. I really don't. I think they miss a little bit. You still kind of need that third scorer. And Teague is actually a pretty good third scorer if he's but he he will be if when you have Kemba on who but here's the mystery of Kemba who knows what he's going to be when he comes back and you, when he you know, comes back like I personally think that Kemba is going to be done for his career I'm going to go worst case scenario on it yeah I don't want to be positive I mean yes positive would be wonderful but let's I'm not be doomsday here but if if Kemba is not back I, I would be surprised if he comes back to the Kemba Walker like we all expect him love. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he'll be what he was. And I think uh, some other radio personalities have kind of hit it on the head, referring to, like, he, he might have shades of, like, a night or two here or there where Kemba it lights it up, and then, like, he's out for another week. I mean, it's kind of like one of those things, like, and it's pretty serious, and at his age, like, he's... It might be another Isaiah Thomas thing. Uh, it might be. I mean, it might be that thing. And Jeff Teague is, is a good um, stopgap for that. And also, like, if Kemba comes back and let's say Kemba reduces his role a bit and doesn't have to shine as brightly and he can just kind of do a little bit of what he uh, what he had, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's still something. And, but Jeff Teague is a great player to come off the bench. Uh, also, if you need him in a pinch to be that starting point guard, he's not that – he's pretty good at it. And Marcus Smart has also been kind of uh, plopped in there as kind of a point guy. But I, I want to see what they do maybe at the trade deadline. Uh, they have a trade mid-level trade exemption, which I heard that they probably will use in the offseason. But let's see what they do. You know, let's see where everyone is. We'll see what's available. If anything, yeah. I mean, we saw what Toronto and Miami did, with <laughs> adding in some veteran pieces at the deadline. And yeah. we know how far – you know, Miami got, you know, that made a big difference with uh, Iguodala and um, some other guys that stepped right in and really helped make the Heat a legitimate force and beat the Celtics. So if they want to use that as an example, I would be shocked if Danny Ainge just sits there and says, oh, we're done. Uh, I, I wouldn't so be shocked. Yeah, I wouldn't be but... shocked, but I think that from what we saw from an example this past summer, I think that if the Celtics go into that, uh, mentality and don't do anything again it's going to be a lot of angry fans once again saying oh you punted again let's overvalue some of our guys here and miss out the one player i do want to also mention before we uh, wrap the celtics uh talk up is uh pritchard holy moly has he been uh better than advertised that was a really good selection in the draft and a lot better than that uh, you know what people expected um, it's not like it's a Carson Edwards. Not that he's a bust or anything, but no. Well, Carson Edwards Richard, Richard Car has really been a spark. He's been a spark, and he's gotten a lot of minutes because Kemba is out too, and they yep. don't know what they want to do with that role. But yeah, I like Pritchard a lot, and I'll get criticized for this in the sense of like, you know, he's just like another gym rat, or he's just another weird white guy who's just running around being scrappy. But you know what? He he knows how to drive to the basket. Uh, he like last night against the Heat. He put up. He puts up that um, that miss layup or that contested layup by uh, Smart, who shouldn't be taking that last shot, by the way. But I do love Marcus Smart, and he, uh, that's a whole other thing. But yeah, Pritchard gets it and he puts it in, and it's like it's like he take he took the garbage out. It was great, and it was something like he With would point two uh, take, seconds left, no less. Yeah, it was nuts. Oh, Tom, there you go. We got him in on some Celtics talk. <laughs> it's good to go. I watch. I watch replays. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say too that. 
I know we talk, I've talked about, you know, Marcus Smart and he's such a spark with everything. One drawback, I will say, happened this past Friday, which was against the Pistons. When oh, yes. Did, that was I, yep. that was a disastrous loss. That loss <laughs> was embarrassing on a lot of ends. But to their credit, I mean, they bounced right back. Sunday they got the win, and then they got the win again, um, <laughs> you know, th- this week. I mean, they be- they've beaten what? It was Miami, and was it Toronto um, on Monday night? Or they something? Milwaukee. They beat, yep, the first win, Milwaukee. the first game so of the year. They beat some really good yeah. teams. So and, I, yeah. I, I, I'm – I'm surprised. I'm surprised that I didn't think that they'd be as good out of the gate as they've been. So right now I think we ride high. I think we say, let's see, let's see more. I'm intrigued. I'm interested. And I want to see what, uh, what this, what the future holds for uh, the Celtics. Yeah. Their next game will be, um, I believe it's Friday evening. Do you know who they're playing, Phil? I actually don't know. I know they're back at the garden and I, yeah, I just to chime in, the they're back at the garden. I don't know exactly who they're playing. I apologize, but I do love how they're trying to do almost like a the baseball. Wizards. Oh, the Wizards. The Wizards. Thanks, okay. Tom. The Wizards. Uh, but I do oh, love how. Particularly coming in there. Good job. Oh, yeah. But uh, no, man. Yeah. I let, we'll see where they go. And I think Jalen Brown is a force. He's always been a force, but now he's just really fully realizing yes. what he can do. That's and, been a big difference. Brown. And, I see more confidence. I see more athletic uh, ability. I definitely think that he did a lot of good with the tr- with his training um, that he did in this, you know, the little bit of off season that he had. He looks like a different player out in court. Confidence is, is very, very important for Brown. And I want that to be built up to continue right, to see yeah. the production that we get. So good point, Phil. I'm glad that you um, brought that to the table. All right, Tom, I want to transition next to the Bruins. Now, I know your stance on this. Don't know Phil's stance on this, but being the person that I am and the host, I will make the first statement and I am interested to hear your take on it. So today the Bruins announced that Patrice Bergeron would be the C. He would be the captain now on this team. Um, the past week, we've learned that Zidane Chara would no longer be a part of the Bruins organization. He's been there since 2006 and an integral part of the defense and team and leadership. The Bruins had the opportunity. They elected to not bring Chara back at a 500000 maybe less of a uh, money kind of deal. And they elected to see him sign with the Washington Capitals. It's not the fact that his skills are diminished and he's getting older and he's retiring. That was a major part of your identity and team and leadership that they elected to not bring him back at a bottom of the barrel base salary, reduced minutes or whatnot, and allowed him to go to another team. I think that is absolutely disgraceful of a organization and the city of Boston or a sports franchise to do that to one of your most iconic stars that's ever worn your jersey. I am disgusted with the Boston Bruins, what they did to Charlie. Tom. Uh, I'm going to have to disagree with you on that. Okay. I, I think Charlie should have retired. I think Charger retired and taken a position on the staff with the Bruins. I don't think he should have signed with a different team because I really don't think he's going to do much to help the Capitals. I mean, we've, we've seen what he's, he's, you know, he's kind of deteriorated, deteriorated over the, the last, I don't know, seven, eight years now. Probably, probably his last good season was probably the 2013 season when we lost the Cup to Chicago. That's that's the last time. That's the last chance the Bruins had to, you know, really get a good deal for Char. Uh, Phil. No, I actually agree with Tom in this regard. And I'm, you know, as we all know, I'm one of the bigger hockey guys on the show. But uh, no, it, I, you know, when you even if you're a casual watcher or just even casually invested in the Bruins in this town, I think I'm the only white guy who doesn't necessarily watch the Bruins, but. Uh, 
like Chara, I know I know a couple of names, Bergeron Chara and um, Marshan. I know a couple others, but I mean Marat, that's Tukarask. Rask, Tukarask. He should have been the captain. He can't, oh, you think the goal, goalies aren't named captains on there? Come on now. Oh, really? <laughs> I could oh, I weird. can't say that with a straight face. So I, yeah. I, I well, no, but I think it's just weird. That, but that is name. true, Tom. I, I and I did know that. I'm not an idiot. Oh dear. Well, I am an idiot. And I will say <laughs> that I think that's weird that they can't, but I guess whatever. But no, I, I don't know. I, like those are people, those are players you identify with the modern. Um, I mean, they, the can, they can be named captains. It just, it would just look silly to have the C on the goal. Oh, the C on the thing. Yeah, yeah. I see. Um, but I guess, well, how long, well, I guess my point is how long, Char has been here for what, like Since almost 20 years? Yeah, Char got yeah. traded, no, signed, not traded, he was signed as a free agent in 2006 from Ottawa. Yeah, and was he was Char paid. and Savard, I believe they Oh, Savard, I do remember, which is another tragedy right there. Another yep. point for me, yay. Yeah, <laughs> I do remember when they signed them, and I remember when he, you know, Savard, like, couldn't, you know, he was so shaken up. But that's I'm going to say that I don't disagree with the both of you. His skills have definitely diminished. I will not take that away. My thing is the leadership. My thing is the mentoring the guys, especially when you just lost Tory Krug. That's two guys now that you just got rid of for basically Zipola. And you're having guys like Kevin Miller. Um. It's going to be a bit, it's, it's express train filling it's in. It's going to be a bunch I, of young I don't guys. Know. I'm not. I'm not worried. I don't know. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I don't. I don't think. I think they should have waited uh, to give the captain to someone. I, I don't really agree with giving it to Bergeron since he's only going to be here for probably one or two more years. Yeah. So it's like, what's the point of giving him the captain if he's not going to be here for that long? If they were going to give it to him, they should have given it to him like five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but I'm not, I'm not worried. I mean, Cat, Bruce Cassidy said that Rask is in the right state of mind right now for this season. So, um, I mean, he'll, he should be at the top of his game. Halak will probably be decent in the regular season anyway. And, uh, you know, as long as the defense is average, then we will, you should be all set. I wasn't talking to myself. I had a phone call, so sorry. No, about that. no I, I know. Like I was sorry. doing. Blah, blah, blah. I was not just. My going, only. Pop, 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 pop. My only. My only concern is that Marshawn and Pasternak are recovering from injuries right now. That that is my only concern. They're be, they're downplaying that. I think a lot. They're putting a lot of. They're banking on a lot of things right there, and that's what I am. Just don't feel super confident with. I don't know how this team looks better this upcoming year than they did last year. That's my, that's my big concern level right there. Well, do you right. think that's a Poo-poo claim? Rask back. Poo-poo crybaby is still back there as your goalie. Do you trust that? I mean, but do you think that, that's it's... another concern? Halak is almost what? 38 years old. <laughs> if Rask decides to, to do, you know, not, participate in the season or something like he did from before Bruins is screwed again well I mean as long as his kids are healthy then he he, he'll stay but that's that's true I'm not trying to you know say that family family is most important and if that's what is the truth towards why Rask left the bubble then you can't criticize that not for me family out the door career uno (laughs) number one out of the year first there (laughs) Is that why you're fa- get is a that family why you on your own your time. Son on the programs with us? Is that That's why? That's right. I oh, said okay. to him, "Hey, get it. I said get your own family yeah. and like do it on your own time." Face your facts. Sonny boy. I, I also, That's right. I and your think, demons. I also, I also think the reason why they didn't sign Char was to save some extra money going into the off season next oh, season. Oh, stop it. Stop it. It's 300 freaking thousand dollars. Come on. Yeah. And that's that's a con- that's a that's an entry level contract. That's a contract for a player coming into the coming Can I have into the some of your smoking, contract. please. Well, well, but wasn't it? I mean, the one thing I have been reading about this isn't it been that like they they offered Chara a reduced role and he kind of bought uh, like kind of balked yeah. at. Oh, it. he did. He did. He did. Balk and it's it. just like, and like Tom said, I kind of 
I think Tom's right. It's Yara's like, it's going like, to turn into Yaramir Yager is what's going to happen. He's going to still well, be in the that'll in be interesting. Beer League, still playing mm-hmm. when he's 55 years old. That's what I think is going to happen with Chara. And kudos to him. Yeah, I mean, he listen, like, he can do whatever he wants, but they have to know, like, the team is going to – they're going to have to start their youth movement at one point. And, I mean, the same thing, make the parallelism between the Celtics and, in another way, what they didn't really do with the Patriots. We're just kind of like, <laughs> oh, bless – um, but like I, I I understand the outrage of a bit because he was such an icon, and you know maybe he had a little bit left in the tank, but I don't know. Well, it, would, it would have been it would have been the same with you know having Jimmy G when he first started up and coming, and having mm-hmm. him come into the starting role of quarterback and saying, "All right, Tom, guess what? You're gonna sit back a little bit. Maybe we'll throw you in a game or here too." Yeah, but it, it's it's his turn now. It's his time. Yeah. I mean, well, and he's in uh, with the Capitals in D.C. now, right? That's yeah. where he got signed. And he's not so, going to do much there. <laughs> well, yeah. I don't I mean, know why. I don't know why they signed him. They don't. They they don't need him. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what he does. I I, yeah. I might I tend to agree with Tom on it. I don't think he'll do much there. I still think he he could have done something with the Bruins, but well, you know, I think it, didn't they? I, they wanted him in like the front office at one point, I think, right? Like, I think that's I think probably they still, still do. on the table. I think, I yeah. think they still will, but uh, I mean, he just wants to keep playing, and I don't. <laughs> yeah. So the Bruins will start January fourteenth. We yeah, talked about this today. in our last show before uh, the new year, so that's when they will get started. I think you know from my take how I'm expecting this year to go, but I want to be wrong. So yeah. let's see how they do. There's Phil's dog. My I mean, one of them, yeah. nap right now. I mean, with the with how the divisions are yeah. set up, they 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 actually have a chance to make playoffs. If we're being oh, honest, oh, right. I hope you're right because I'm <laughs> um I've been way too frustrated with how the Bruins have been. Um, you know, I think we're very lucky they had 20 uh, 2011's cup. I do. I think we're very lucky that that happened. I want another cup. Please. I mean, 2011 was an underdog team, really, if you think it about was. it. It was like the 2004 Red Sox. It really yep. was, it was the underdog. You know, even 13's team was the underdog, too. So, I mean, hopefully we can see Hopefully we can see another one. I really want to see Bergeron and Marchand get another cup. You know, I want a Char in there, but if Char is not a part of it, I'll, I'll, I'll take a Bergeron and a Marchand to get it done. But they got to hit it now because this window, it's, it's closing – well, I mean, they're they're fortunate enough where that the way they set up the divisions is Tampa, Washington, and Pittsburgh yep. are all in one division. They have the they separated the they uh, segregated the Canadian teams to their own division now. So, I mean, the only the only team that you know I see kind of being you know a, a burden to the Bruins this year in the division in their division is the Sabers. So that's it. I mean, it, it, it's. I, I, I there's. I think they're still going to finish top of the division because there's not much, uh, not much uh, competition. Right. So we'll see how that goes. But we'll see. Uh, on the football front, very weird that we will not have Patriots football this upcoming playoffs. So and no more Cam Newton. Hopefully, there's still reports saying that he might be back. Listen, I hope we sign him for eight more years. Oh, goodbye. <laughs> That's Shut, so up, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> That's, yeah. I just want a Cam Newton player coach situation to go through. You just want to Steve... buy you just want a reason to buy his jersey. His, yeah, that's his right. jersey. Him in a Steve Belichick jersey, he just comes out. Coach of the year, Steve Belichick. I just did a Nick Casario. Oh yeah. Did he actually walk off one time? He did. He did. When? He's with the Texans now. He just signed with the Texans. Oh, weird. That's another loss on the personnel. I think that's more of the story with the Patriots uh, than the actual players on the team. The amount of personnel that's left in the past three years is astounding. Well, but I mean, that's kind of like, I mean, that also happened at the end of their initial run. Remember, if you might recall. After like five or six or something like that. I think it was like the Um, 2006. You know what I also find that's really surprising? What? Where are the Josh McDaniels rumors this year? Well, you know what? There, I don't know. There were a couple, like one of them for there's none. Is it? Texans. There was one for the Texans at one point. There's none. Uh, no, you didn't hear there was the Texans at one point. But I mean, I guess 
I mean, there was something out there. I don't know how uh, substantiated they are, but I think he he wants to coach here, don't you? I, I would only imagine. I would only imagine. I, I think he. I think he just went out for the inter. I think he went out for the interviews last year just to see if he could get the job. Yeah. And once the Colts were like, "Oh yeah, we mm-hmm. want you as our coach." All right, never mind. I don't want. I don't want it anymore. Oh, that was a couple of years ago. Yeah, and then or, Frank yeah, took was, over. Yeah. So my question here is, I'm assuming that you guys are interested with Tampa to see what happens with, with that story. Of course. So they finished their year was 11 and five. Brady looks like the typical, I mean, I looks probably, decent. Was, I probably think he's probably gonna be the MVP. Oh, wow. Really? I, I very well could be. I mean, we had what 42, 43 touchdowns. Oh, did he? Um, wow. He had one of the best. There are other candidates though in the NFC. I think there are Russell Wilson, candidates. Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. Um, Rodgers had a very good year, but my question what? here is, how far do we think Tampa's actually oh. going to go? Do we think that they're still destined for the Super Bowl? See, I don't think so. I think I it's going to be maybe they'll win the wild card weekend thing. Yeah. But I I don't think that they advance after that. I think. They, it's about, they, They'd have to get through the Saints. I think Washington, yeah, they'd have to they get to the Super Bowl, they have to get the Saints. I don't think they're beating the Saints, but Saints are snake bitten. So Yeah. Regular season. I mean, when it comes to the postseason, they choke. So oh, that's true. Well, I mean, that's a, a big who knows? There. The, the, I don't pat, know. the pattern is that the, the Buccaneers start off slow and then they yeah. score big in the second half. And I mean, you know, it is playoffs. And if you can't score in the first half, then you're not you're, you're not yeah. really gonna have Too much big of a chance. Hole. Yeah. Unless you have a lockdown defense too. That's I don't. I don't care how good Brady is in the playoffs. But <laughs> it, it's. I mean, it's a whole different, whole different ball game, and he knows that. But I mean, how many of those guys have actually been to the playoffs on that team, on that roster? Not many. <laughs> Not a lot. But I, listen, we could also. Here's a kind of fun thing, uh, for the first time in, in the history of these two being in the league. We might see a divisional round where Aaron Rodgers goes against Tom Brady. Uh, I think that's possible the way the seating is because, um, you know, Green Bay has that bye. And I think uh, Tampa Bay is the fifth seed. So, and they're going against uh, Washington, who I think is the fourth. So, dependent on like, oh, yeah, well, maybe not because I think like the sixth or seventh, whoever wins that, I think will go against Green Bay. But, you know, you never know uh, what happens. And I don't know, I'm looking forward to. The NFC NFC is very exciting. And, hey, the AFC is chock full of weird matchups. I'm not excited to see Pittsburgh and the Browns again. I think that's kind of – I think we kind of got – I still think it's disgraceful what happened in the NFC East with the Giants and all that crap that went on. Didn't you see that game with the Eagles with Sudfield as the – what the hell is wrong with the NFL for allowing that jackass, Doug Peterman, or Doug, whatever the hell – Peterson, is. Peterson, yeah. To allow that crap to happen, talk about but Well, I think he knew he was on his way out too. You know oh, what I mean? He better be after that. No, he Imagine got fired. He got fired. Your players that this is what we're, that Jalen hurts hurts guy. Yeah, this is who we're gonna play. This is what we're gonna do. How can you respect your head coach after that disgraceful performance that you just showed America? That's terrible. Yeah, Awful. I mean. He kept his pants on, at least from my vantage point, ish. Oh, I think his pants were fully off. Well, isn't this isn't this the first time the Giants have made the playoffs since they beat the Patriots the last time in the Super Bowl? Probably. Well, no, it's not the no the Giants didn't make it. It was the uh, oh, thought... Washington. No, it was Washington. Oh, the Giants. Oh, yeah, the they, they oh, it is, it is. Right. No, it's right. Washington. No, but I actually, honestly, I kind of wanted the Giants to make it. Because I thought it would be more exciting and weird because the Giants played a good game against the Cowboys. And they actually, like, we'll see how they, they are next year. But, you yeah, know, it's kind of weird that the Washington. Do you guys have a, a, a prediction who might win it and who we might see in the Super Bowl? Oh, I think AFC, I don't think there's a contest. I think it's, I think it's Kansas City. But yeah. you know what? You never know. I mean, I don't, you know. I don't know. know. Bu- Buffalo, Buffalo might sneak up on everybody. Well, you know what? Uh, that's a good point. I think that'll be a I shootout. Think, I don't think. I don't game. think. I don't think Pittsburgh will make it far. No, no, I have no faith in Pittsburgh. I don't think. I don't yeah. think Baltimore's at that at that step yet where they'll be able to make it far either. I will tell you, mm-hmm. I would root for for the Bills over Kansas City. I would pretty much root for anybody over Kansas City. I think. Even, I even think Steelers probably. It all depends on how the Bills look in the first game. 
Who are they I, playing? In the I first really season? do hope that they give it a good run. I do hope they give it a good run. No, I think I think it'll be a fun playoff. I think there are a lot of teams we haven't seen in a while. I I, I want the Browns to kind of make it at least a game. That would be, that would be sneaky good too. Yeah, it, it, it's I, nice to see other teams other than the usual. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go out on a limb. I'm gonna say Green Bay versus the Chiefs. Yeah, that doesn't seem. I mean, I think I think you're gonna have an NFC Championship. I think you're going to have. It's either gonna be like a Seattle. Um, well, actually, yeah, probably Seattle uh, Saints or Seattle Green Bay, but who knows? I wouldn't who be makes surprised it? if we see the Seahawks either. So, if you want to dial yeah. back this tape or dial back yeah. this file or whatever yeah, it is, sure. the Super Bowl is, I wouldn't be surprised if it's Seahawks, Chiefs, or if it's uh, uh, Packers and Chiefs. But I don't think anybody else is gonna match with the Chiefs. I mean, I'd love to see Brady make his way to the, I the Super Bowl, but I, do. I don't know if that's happening. But I think I would still feel okay if it was, you know, he gets this championship. Because after what we saw from New England this year, I, yeah. I, 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 I don't know. I, I, still, I still will always be a Brady man. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to say it's going to be Seattle and Buffalo. Ooh. I like. I mean, I, I would totally be for that. I have no I, issues whatsoever. whatsoever. I mean, it's like you said, the, the Saint, the Saints trying to be my real self. Saints yeah. tend to choke in the playoffs, but uh, you know I've been saying this entire season, Green Bay chokes in the playoffs too. So I do. I'm gonna, they have. I'm gonna, they go, have. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Seattle and Buffalo. Um, I think. I mean, it could be Tampa Bay, and who knows? I mean, maybe maybe even Cleveland will sneak up on everybody and just blow everybody out of the water. Never know. Well, who do you think? Do you think if the Saints aren't playing well in the first half of their first game or any of the games before the Super Bowl, do you think they put in, uh, what's his name, uh, instead of uh, Breeze? Do you think they take Breeze out? Name? Is it T- Tyson Hill or something? Something like that, yeah. Oh, Tyson yeah, Hill yeah, or yeah. something. Yeah, Tyson yes. Hill. Do you think they put him in? No. 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 I, I, I think, they, we'll I think, I think no if anything, I think if anything, they'll put him in for a couple plays and put Breeze back in, put they him don't back. Rotate. Put Hill yeah. They've been creative on that. I think that's great, to be honest. I, more teams should do it if they have the opportunity. Well, I will say that this is going to do it for our time here on this episode of Face the Facts. We will talk more about what the playoffs look like after Wild Card Weekend next week and see if there's any surprises or any, uh, any duds. So we'll keep you informed on that front. We'll see how the Celtics continue with their uh, little hot streak that they have going on. And anything else that arises, we will talk more on our next episode of Face the Facts. So for Phil Healy, Tom Smith, Nick Face, and Jake the Sleepy Dog, we will see you next time on another episode of Face the Facts. See you later. Adios.